Hello peeps. How is everybody? This is Ann. Yes, shorter hair. It needed it. It was getting crispy on the ends and just mm, no. Nah. Anyway, I was watching one of my other favorite tubers. Annette of Annette's Makeup Corner and she was talking about her brushes and she was going through her brush collection and getting rid of ones that she really doesn't like and I'm going okay I'm seriously a micro tuber and I've got a heck of a lot of brushes guys and I realized when because of my health issues I can't sit and do a lot of repetitive stuff for very long it took me two count them two days to clean the brushes that I had allowed to stack up because I'd use them and go floop into the bucket and pull some more out and floop into the bucket. And it just literally kept stacking. I had <laughs> this is about two thirds of the brushes, the number of brushes I have on my desk currently. And this doesn't, this is just the eye brushes. The, the other third of the eye brushes. It, it's just more eye brushes. And then I've got two pots of fa face brushes. And I'm going, you know, Annette was talking about, you know, getting your favorite brushes and kind of, of you know, you, you want to use your favorite brushes. I mean, they're, what's the point of having favorite brushes if you're not using them? The problem comes in where I've got a lot of brush shapes that I like and brush textures that I like. But I also have... Um, what some people would call a lazy streak that's at least as long as my arm, all right? All right, yeah. Because I'm not getting up and washing my brushes, at least the ones that I have very few of, quite regularly enough to necessarily keep them in good condition the other problem is I grab my favorite brushes first and then they end up in the bottom of the wash bucket under a pile of well this will do brushes and I was thinking about that again when I was looking at some of the new makeup that I just got in, the new eye palettes and stuff. And some of them are really, really pigmented. And I'm going, huh, I just washed this brush and the color switch will not take all the yellow off. can't get all the reddish brown off can't get that red off this is a shimmer that picked up the red that was beside it this dark green on here is what I picked up to put under my eyes. Now I only just washed these and put them back in the jar after they finished drying. And already I need to wash these again because of the pigmentation. The other ones that I've, you know, pulled semi-regularly 
are things like the blush brushes and the bronzer brushes and the powder brush and God help me the foundation brush because that gets nasty real quick. Now like this brush which is my favorite because it's got this wonderful little angle which is great for doing this. I use this with the base that I use for my eye makeup. And let me tell you, that concealer gets sticky real quick. And if I don't wash it often enough, the brush gets really nasty. So, yeah, what I've done is now that I've gotten this particular wash load finished, is... I took about half, because the brushes that I currently have are ones that fit into my favorites category. They're the right shapes and the right size and the right texture. Because I gave a bunch to my daughter-in-law for her and my granddaughter to use. And I'm going, she can pick the one she wants and then, you know, spread them out from there. But I was still had taking the ones that I had put away and just snatching out of them as, you know, the little jars get flow. And still just letting the brushes pile up to the point where I was having to do two days to wash all the brushes. Yes, I've collected a few. And I've got some that even though they are really, really, really nice brushes, not, well, maybe only really nice brushes. I mean, we are talking stuff that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. But, you know, with the little foobar that Wet n Wild pulled about not telling us that they were now selling in China, and even though it's aftermarket testing and only if somebody claims to have an issue, they're still now liable to be tested on animals. They didn't tell us that there had been a change and they had been listed as cruelty free. So I took all of my wet and wild brushes and had put them away. And once in a while they'll sneak back out because I've got a bad habit of just pulling out the backstock brushes and not washing them often enough to keep this one layer of brushes clean so I can use them to do filming. And it's not like I'm filming five or six videos a day. It's going to come close to that as we get closer to December because of trying to do things like the 25 days of Christmas and that kind of thing. But even then, I should not be doing so many videos that I'm going to have to spend two days washing brushes. Like I said, part of the problem is when you've got that many brushes out, and you can just keep dumping brushes into the wash bucket and wait for it. You end up just putting yourself in a corner. So I'm going to try for a while and I will hopefully remember to update on this on a fairly, fairly regular basis. I've got a much smaller basket for 
the wash basket. Before, I literally had a oval bucket that, you know, one of the little one quart buckets you pick up at, at like Dollar Tree. Now, this little basket has some space, but not nearly the stacking space that bucket had. And this is open, and I'm keeping it sitting where I'm not able to just ignore it. The wash bucket was down in the drawer that's got the clean, the other clean brushes. And the drawer was usually closed right after it was a slide it open, drop them in, close the bucket, close the drawer, bucket is hidden. So, I'm going to be trying a little harder to stay better connected with my brushes and a little more efficient with the washing. Now, I, this is my absolute favorite for doing the base. I have a few others that I consider equally good, just it's a different brush. It's a different shape. This is one of the flats that I love. I've got a bunch of these. I've only got one of these. Eventually, I would like to have more of these, but it's not an emergency. So, yeah, this one's been used. It's got cream concealer all in the bristles. This is not necessarily a good thing for it to keep very long. All those eye brushes that I used, because these colors are so pigmented, the brushes are pretty well screwed. Yeah, I was using the Cageling from Irenis that I picked up through Amazon. I mean, it's a gorgeous palette but it was inexpensive. I think I paid 11 bucks for this. I think. But I'm going, it's so pretty. But let me tell you, I've got that yellow. And this brown. And what else did I do? And I've got a little bit of that red. And a little bit of that, which is kind of a coppery bronze. And some of that, which is just incredible shimmer. It really is. That is really a gorgeous thing. That's what I've got on the interior of the eye and just under the, um, in the corner of the eye and just under the eyebrow. So, yeah. But that's some intense stuff. And between all that, I have wrecked the clean brushes that I just washed. Which means I'm going to have to do them again. But I don't want to leave them sit forever. Because it's just, yeah, yuck. And you don't want stuff left sitting in your brushes. Especially cream stuff. Like foundations and such. Because if you do that... It's going to get embedded in there, and it once if it dries in there, you're going to have a really hard time getting it out. So I'm going not just don't just curate your brush collection. Think about how often 
you actually need to clean your brushes. Think about whether or not it makes sense to have a gazillion of a particular type of brush that you've got so many that you can stack up enough brushes in your wash bin to have to take two days to wash everything. I have a limited amount of counter space that I can spread the brushes out on once they're washed. I have a limited amount of energy I can use to wash them. Some of you may be able to do all that many brushes in one day. Good on ya. I can't. The other thing is it's just plain a bad habit to take decent brushes and leave dirty stuff left stuck in them. I mean, think about it. If you're putting your eyeshadow, which if you've got white bristle brushes are likely to be stained, if you take your eyeshadow and put it on a base cream, don't you think a little bit of that base cream is going to get into that shadow brush as well as the excess pigment? Do you really want nastiness growing in your brushes? <sighs> Sorry about that little break there, my grandchildren came to show me their their Halloween costumes. I normally have a sign on the outside of the door that says go away. I'm working. I forgot to flip it. So there they came. Yeah, one side says it's safe. The other side says go away. I'm working. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm thinking about not only a cleanliness issue, but just an efficiency issue. I mean, and but like I said, you tend to keep your favorite brushes in a place where you can reach them quickly. So your favorite brushes, if you're letting things pile up, are ending up being used first because, oh, God, my favorite brushes are back. And then you use them. And then you throw them back in the wash bucket. So they then end up in the bottom again. Which is not necessarily the most perfect place for them to be. I mean, I've got a couple of brushes that have gotten at least mildly deformed from being down in the bottom of the bucket and bending, getting the bristles bent. So I'm having to use, you know, flipping them around and reforming and, and massaging them and using those little net brush condom things that keep the bristles straight while you're while it's drying. Now I don't normally use those little net things on small brushes. But you know, things like my blush brushes, oh yeah. This will get the little net thing put over. I want to challenge some people, though. If you've got, like, gazillion brushes, and you have a bad habit of letting them sit until you've got a huge bucket load, I'm going to challenge you to only put out a third of your total brush collection to be used on your desk. You want to display them around your room, 
put them on a shelf, whatever, because I will probably have some of mine on shelves once I get my shelves in. And I want you to get, I mean, you can get a little, ba little basket at Dollar Tree that you can keep somewhere in front of you so you can see what the brush load looks like. And keep making sure you're taking care of those brushes and not letting them sit forever and not letting them get piled up and give it a shot see if that doesn't make your brush collection feel a little better just because you're able to use your absolute favorites more often the other thing is if you've got multiples of the same brushes Put some of them away, away, so that when the ones you use the most often start to fray and wear, because they will, you have ones in reserve that you can look at this poor disheveled brush and thank it for its long service, pitch it in the bin, and get a fresh one out to replace it. I'm trying this. I'm challenging some of the rest of you to try it. I want to hear about it if you do try it. I'm going to promise that I will make my best effort to keep it up. I never promise anything absolutely. There is no such animal. It just doesn't work for me. But I'm hoping that it's going to make a difference in my brushes, my brush use, and the amount of work it takes for me to do maintenance on my brushes. And I hope that it actually helps some of you out there if you're having issues of putting off doing your brush maintenance because there are so many brushes to get to. That can be a daunting thing to look at. It's like, oh my God, I've got this huge pile. I don't have time. I'll do it later and later can sometimes take a month. Ew. Icky. Anyway. This is my first look out of the Cageling palette. Tell me what you think. If you love it, let me know, and I might redo it as a tutorial. If you're not so thrilled with it, well, that's okay. There will be others. Just remember, there is no bail money. Be good.